This single website is making over $5,000 every single month completely passively. And I'm about to show you exactly how to build one just like it in the next 18 minutes using nothing but AI. Just look at this. 560,000 visitors per month with a $10 RPM. That's $5,600 in pure passive income just from Google AdSense. And the crazy part is that this entire website is basically just one page. Now, here's what nobody's talking about. You don't need to know how to code. You don't need web design skills, and you definitely don't need thousands of dollars to get started. I'm going to prove it to you right now by building a website exactly like this one from scratch using one AI tool. AdSense for that passive income, and even adding Stripe for premium features. By the end of this video, you'll have a complete blueprint for creating your own passive income website, and I guarantee that this is going to be the most practical tutorial you've ever watched because we're doing everything live, no coding experience required. So if you're ready to see how a complete beginner can build a money-making website in 15 minutes, let's dive right in. When you're starting something big, it helps to set the foundation right. Before adding features or designs, I want to make sure the app has its core pages, navigation, and structure in place. That way, every new piece we build later on has a clean home to live in. But first, I need to share this disclaimer. Building websites and earning money online takes real work, no matter what the other YouTubers might claim. When I walk you through creating a website, I'm showing you the process and possibilities, not guaranteeing you'll get the same results. The AI tools and methods I use are legit, but your outcome really depends on your own effort, timing, and yes, even a bit of luck. Many sites take time before they earn anything and plenty never actually do. I'm not promising you'll get rich or to quit your job or you'll achieve instant success. This isn't financial advice or some overnight money-making scheme. It's simply a look at what's possible. What you choose to do with that info is completely your call. Now that that's clear, let's get back to building. I'll start with this prompt. Create a full stack baby names app using the best available tech stack. Include pages for home, search, browse, name detail, blog, tools, and pricing. Replit instantly scaffolds the project using a modern full stack setup. React or next.js on the front end, note.js for the back end, and a simple database like SQLite for demo use with the option to scale to Postgres later. All the main pages are generated and wired together through a clean navigation bar. Here I can see home, search, browse, name detail, blog, tools, and pricing already in the navigation. Each link opens its own page when I click through, and while they just have the placeholder text right now, the structure is ready. The point here isn't to finish the app yet is to create a professional skeleton that's expandable. Since this base is already in place, it's now easy to develop and test new features one by one without worrying about the overall framework. Naming features only matter if there's real data behind them. So before building search tricks or smart filters, I'm going to load the app with a serious data set. Thousands of names, rich metadata, and clean categories so users can actually browse and explore. This is the prompt that I'm going to use. Add a comprehensive name database to the app. See the database with thousands of baby names and detailed information for each. Every name should be categorized by gender as boy, girl, or gender neutral, and should include name, slug, gender, meanings, origin, syllables, style, popularity by year, and trend score. The database should include a wide variety of origins and styles. Replit sets up the backend schema and wiring. A names table is created with fields for the display name, a URL slug, gender, meanings, cultural or language origin, numbers of syllables, style tags, and a popularity array tracking usage by year. 
The database is also seeded with a large realistic sample, so the app already has thousands of names spanning many cultures, styles, and genders. Now, what we have here is a working engine for the site, a professional comprehensive database that powers the home, search, browse, and name detail pages with real data. And if more sample names are needed later, the AI can expand the set further with a simple follow-up prompt. All right, search is one of the most important parts of the app, so the next step is to build a page that makes finding names fast and intuitive. Users should be able to type in a name or meaning, select the number of syllables, choose an origin or ethnicity, and pick a gender. The search also needs to work by meaning, such as returning all names that mean life. Results are displayed in a clean list or grid with filters for both origin and syllable count. So I'll use this prompt for this one. Build a search page that lets users look for names by typing in a name or meaning, selecting the number of syllables, choosing an origin or ethnicity, and picking a gender. The search should also work by meaning, such as finding all names that mean light. Include filters for both origin and syllable count, and display results in a list or grid. Replit sets up the search page with advanced filters so users can search by word, syllable count, origin, and gender. Results update instantly as the user's type or changes filters, creating a smooth and natural experience. If names don't display or if a search returns nothing, I can use the follow-up prompt, names don't show up when I search, to have the AI fix any bugs or indexing issues in the search logic. This is now a fully functional search system with advanced filters and keyword matching. Users can now explore the database in a way that goes beyond basic browsing, highlighting the meanings, origins, and styles that make each name unique. Now, clicking on a name should feel like opening a story, not just a line of data. What I want here is to turn each name detail page into a complete profile where everything about that name is easy to understand at a glance. So the prompt driving this step is, optimize the name detail pages for each name. Each page should show the meaning and etymology of the name its origin or cultural background, a line chart of popularity trends from 2010 to 2025, style categorization, and all other details from the database. Make the page clean and easy to read. Replit transforms the layout so each entry feels like an article. Along with the meaning and background, users see style labels, variants, and related names that encourage deeper exploration. The popularity chart loads smoothly and the design is carefully balanced for both desktop and mobile. So no matter where you're browsing, the details are accessible without effort. What this unlocks is more than just functionality. Each name detail page becomes a place to learn, compare, and discover context that adds weight to the name itself. It gives the app depth and credibility, making it valuable not just for quick lookups, but for anyone genuinely curious about the history and character behind the name. However, not every visitor arrives knowing exactly what name they want. That's why browsing by categories is really important as this gives people different paths to explore the database until something catches their eye. Instead of typing a search term, users can move through categories that make sense to them. Culture, alphabet, style, or popularity. So now, let's tell Replit. Make the browse section so users can browse by origin, such as Indian or Persian, by the first letter of the name from A to Z, by style, like traditional, modern, or unique, and by popularity, showing trending names for 2025. Each option should link to a filtered list of names. The browse section now comes to life with multiple entry points. Choosing origin opens a list of cultures and languages to pick from. Letter browsing lays out A through Z, so clicking a letter shows all names that begin with it. Style browsing separates names into groups like nature-inspired, vintage, and modern. 
Finally, popularity browsing brings forward the names trending in 2025, drawing from the database trend score or recent worth data. Every option leads to a pre-filtered list, so clicking any of these shows the most popular names right now. Browsing this way turns discovery into part of the experience, inviting users to explore new origins, styles, and trends that they might not have even considered. This also encourages users to stay longer, click deeper, and find inspiration in names they might not have searched for directly. But an app like this isn't only about data and tools. It also needs a space for fresh content that keeps people coming back. This is the purpose of the blog page, a hub where parents, writers, and anyone curious about names can find new insights, trends, and advice. Posts can cover topics like baby naming trends for the current year, celebrity announcements, expert tips, and even resources for writers who need help naming characters. So now let's use this prompt to set that up. Improve the blog page with posts about baby naming trends for the current year, celebrity baby name announcements, expert advice and tips, and resources for writers who need help naming characters. Include a blog index, single post view, and easy navigation by tags. After that, the blog page expands into a proper content section. A main blog index shows posts as cards with a title, featured image, and excerpt. Clicking on any card opens the full article, complete with tags for easy discovery and navigation. Posts that are unavailable or fail to load can be fixed with follow-up prompts like some of the blogs are unavailable or allow users to read the articles, show a card with the article details. Instead of looking like a static tool, the app now has an active space where new stories, trends, and advice keep the experience fresh. This not only makes the site more engaging for users, but also strengthens it as a go-to resource for baby names and writers. With SEO-friendly content and simple navigation, the blog adds credibility while helping the app reach a wider audience. Beyond browsing and search, an app like this benefits from interactive tools that keep users engaged. The tools page is the place to build them out offering features that feel fun, useful, and personalized. This step focuses on three additions, a baby names astrology tool, a name compatibility tool, and a personalized recommendations tool. The prompt that we'll use for this is, optimize the tools page with a baby names astrology tool that matches names to zodiac signs and personality traits. A name compatibility tool where users can enter two names to get a compatibility score and explanation, and a personalized recommendations tool that asks about user preferences and shows the best matching names after a short quiz. So with this in place, the tools page comes alive with interactive features. The Baby Names Astrology tool lets users input a zodiac sign and receive name suggestions tied to that sign's personality traits. The name compatibility tool takes two names and returns a compatibility score along with an explanation, making it appealing both for writers and for couples. The personalized recommendations tool guides users through a short quiz, asking about preferences such as styles, origins, and syllable counts, and then delivers names that best match those inputs. If the system ever produces zero matches, a follow-up prompt like it is finding zero names that match my preferences, can be used to refine the logic so that results always appear when reasonable options exist. Building on this momentum, we have to make sure that there's a way to make the app sustainable. Every successful app eventually needs a way to sustain itself, and for this project, that means offering a premium tier. Stripe is the backbone of that upgrade path, making payments secure while keeping the experience smooth for users. Premium unlocks the features people actually want most, full access to personalized recommendations, 
the ability to save favorite name lists, and even the possibility of going ad-free. So to make that work, we will use this prompt. Integrate Stripe to enable premium features, such as access to full personalized recommendations and the ability to save favorite name lists. Add a pricing page and allow users to upgrade to premium easily. Stripe integration introduces a clear payment system so users can easily upgrade to premium access. The upgrade unlocks key features such as full personalized recommendations, the option to save favorite name or lists, and even the possibility of browsing without ads. To make that choice simple, the pricing page lays out the benefits clearly and provides an easy path to subscribe. So let's test the subscription process in test mode. Walk through the Stripe checkout flow and upgrade with just a couple of clicks. If there are issues such as being redirected to localhost or not seeing a premium status, a follow-up like, after the successful subscription, it redirected me to localhost. Also, after a successful subscription, it should show a premium badge. We'll correct the redirected URL and ensure the badge appears. What this unlocks is more than just a payment button. The app now has a clear path to sustainability with users able to see the benefits, upgrade seamlessly, and immediately know their subscription worked. Premium isn't hidden or confusing. It's visible, accessible, and backed by Stripe Secure Checkout. Once Stripe is set up for premium features, the next layer of monetization comes from the ads. Google AdSense makes it possible to generate revenue from traffic directly, and for this app, the goal is to place banners in clear, visible spots across the main pages. That includes the search page, blog, name detail pages, and any other high traffic sections. The ad should be obvious enough for both users and Google's crawlers to detect, but placed carefully so they don't overwhelm the experience. So for this step, we'll prompt Replit to integrate Google AdSense across the app by adding visible ad banners to all main pages, including search, blog, and name detail. As part of the setup, a verification meta tag also needs to be placed in the site's head section so the AdSense account is recognized. After implementing that, banners will appear across the app in the right spots, and the verification tag ensures that the site is connected to the correct Google AdSense account. If the app hasn't been approved yet, preview mode or test ads can be used to confirm that placements are working. This step prepares the app to start generating ad revenue as soon as traffic scales, ensuring that alongside premium subscriptions, site visits themselves can also drive income. Wow, we've taken this project from nothing to a fully working app that's ready for real users. The build now stands as a strong foundation, showing how an idea can turn into something practical and usable. The best part is that the direction from here is wide open. Maybe it's adding AI-powered name suggestions, maybe it's expanding the blog with community-driven stories, or maybe it's scaling the database even further with global records. Whatever comes next, the foundation is here, and each update can only make the project stronger. So if you got ideas, I want to hear them. Drop a comment down below with the features you'd like to see or the tools you think would take this app to the next level. And if you want to keep up with future builds like this, make sure to subscribe because this is just one of the projects out of many and the next one might just be even bigger. See you in the next one. Bye!